morning, Yellow Jackets. Programming for the 2015 school year has arrived. Today, the guidance department will walk you through the steps that will allow you to be successful in selecting and completing your 2015-2016 courses. My name is Ms. Reed, and I have the wonderful privilege, privilege of serving students, last names A through B, UTA, and Abbott. Today, I will review your graduation requirements based on the year that you entered ninth grade. I'm Mrs. Scriven. I am your college and career counselor. I work with all students grades 9 through 12. Today I'm going to discuss the importance of college and career readiness with you all. Also highlight a few things such as bright futures and community service uh, as well as planning for life after high school. I'm Ms. Bishop. I serve the population Q through Z in Maritime. Today I'll be going over the course programming sheet and the dates that they're due. And I'm Mr. Riley. I work with the students' last names C through H, and I'm going to be going over the resources needed to fill out that uh, program sheet. And I'm Ms. Ray. I handle students I through P and ELL, and I'm just going to wrap everything up at the end. All right, Yellow Jackets, let's begin. All right, good morning. My name is Ms. Reed. Before I begin today, I want to make sure that you have all of the documents that you need in order to begin your 2015-2016 programming process. Students, make sure you have your grade level programming worksheet, your grade level course selection worksheet, the graduation requirement guide for the year that you entered ninth grade, the handout for Bright Futures requirements, and the Choices College Board Big Futures handout. All right. So let's begin. The first item that I want you to take a look at is your graduation requirements guide for the year that you entered ninth grade. English requirements. All students must take four years of English. That's English one, two, three, and four. All students must earn four credits in math. Algebra one, all students must take and pass the end of course exam for Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and a fourth math. Geometry and Algebra 2 require you to take an end of course exam and it will constitute 30% of your final grade. Three credits of science, Biology, Physical Science or Chemistry, and a third science. Three credits of social studies, world history, American history, American government, and economics. Students will be required to take the end of course exam for American history, and it will constitute 30% of your final grade. One credit of hope, and if you decide that you would like to be a part of our junior ROTC program, you can take two years of junior ROTC and it will waive your PE requirement of hope. If you're planning on attending a state university as your post high school option, you must complete two credits of world language and it must be two consecutive units of world language. So if you decide to take French, it must be two units in French. If it's Spanish, two units in Spanish. If it's American Sign Language, two units of American Sign Language. Again, that is a college admissions requirement, not a high school graduation requirement. All students must take a half credit of reading, complete one credit of a performing or fine arts credit, and complete one online virtual course. An example of one course is for example, psychology. Well, psychology will earn you a half credit. If you complete psychology, you will have met the virtual requirement. If you decide to take HOPE, HOPE it's a full credit. It requires you to take segment one and two in order to meet the virtual requirements. Thank you for your attention. Students, at this time, you'll need to take your grade course selection worksheet out it's going to differ by grade level. We will start with 10th grade. 
At the top of the sheet, you'll see a place for your name, student number, email, and phone number. Please make sure all of this information is filled out before you begin. Moving on to the core academic courses listed first on the sheet. For 10th grade, you see English, Science, Social Studies, and Math. You will need to have this filled out by your teacher and then signed. The, the levels are going to differ depending on honors or AP or regular. Make sure you have this discussion with your teacher and you guys pick the best fit for you. Moving on to the additional course, this will be where your hope, your foreign languages, or any other mat or starting with traditional, any other electives are placed for magnet. And we'll move on to that sheet, but you'll have your own your own space for magnet. And we'll talk about that briefly. Moving on, you'll want to take your your elective choices in order of preference. So where it says first, second, third, fourth, fifth, make sure you list them in the order that you want them, so we can do our best to accommodate you. If you move to the bottom of the sheet where it says some required courses may be substituted for electives based on state benchmarks to meet graduation requirements, this is where your liberal arts, your intensive reading, and your intensive math may come in and take away some of your electives. That's mandated by test scores and that's something that we will as counselors go in and add. Um, also there is a single gender section indicated. If you or your parent or both think that you, guys, that you might want to take single gender classes, Make sure your parent signs that. If you need to have a conversation with somebody, come talk to guidance about that. If you move on to the magnet sheet, you'll see where the magnet courses are listed under the core courses. Make sure that your magnet teacher writes the section and they sign it. We will not put it in without the teacher signing what class you should be in. And the rest of it is basically the same. Moving on to 11th grade, you will see the same exact worksheets for both magnet and traditional you will go about this the same way. Remember, once again, you have to have hope and two years of foreign language before you graduate. Well, if you're going to a university, you have to have two years of foreign language. We recommend them for all students. Moving on to senior, you'll see that there's no map, well, there's a map, there's no science listed. If you're gonna be competitive at a university, you will need to have a math and science class your senior year. So go ahead and add the science class under number four under additional courses if that's what you're, the route you wanna take. Um, obviously social studies will be government and economics, math could be a number of things, and then once again moving down to alternate cho courses, make sure you list them in preferential order. These will be completed through grade level huddles. 11th grade will be meeting on January 27th, 10th grade will be meeting on January 28th, and 9th grade will be meeting on January 29th. We'll see you then. Hi students, this is Mr. Riley again talking about the resources to, to use to complete the program sheet. Refer to the curriculum guide online. The guide uh, will give you detailed descriptions for the courses that are listed on the course selection sheets. Also, meet with your teachers for the following, and that would be all academic level approval classes, so honors and AP level courses, as well as magnet classes. Bright Future Scholarship Program. Bright Future Scholarship Program is funded by Florida's lottery system. Uh, this is an automatic scholarship, whereas if students meet the requirements, they automatically receive funding for towards college tuition. Now there are three specific types of Bright Future Scholarships. You have your Florida Academic Scholarship, your Florida Medallion Scholarship, and the Florida Gold Seal Scholarship. The Florida Academic Scholarship students must have a 3.5 weighted GPA within 16 academic credits. Uh, those credits specifically will be like your English, your math, social studies, science, and foreign language. Students also have to take the SAT or the ACT uh, and score a 1290 SAT in critical reading and math or the ACT, a 29 composite score. Community service is also required for each scholarship program and for the academic scholarship, you must have at least 100 hours of approved community service hours. The Florida Medallion Scholarship, students must have a weighted 3.0 GPA uh, in the 16 academic courses. Again, those courses are your English, Math, Social Studies, Science, and Foreign Language. Uh, you also have to take the SAT or the ACT. An 1170 SAT score is required in the Critical Reading and Math section uh, or the 
ACT, you must have a 26 composite score. As far as hours, you must have a minimum of 75 hours of approved community service hours. The Florida Gold Seal Scholarship, this is more of our vocational scholarship. Uh, this is aimed towards students that are within the vocational programs here at Blake High School. Students must have an overall 3.0 GPA uh, within various courses uh, that are required for graduation. You also have to have a unweighted 3.5 GPA within your vocational program. Um, the programs here that we have on campus, examples would be uh, culinary, cosmetology, uh, our business programs, those type programs. You must also take uh, SAT or the ACT as well as the PERT. Uh, either one of these tests would suffice as long as you meet the minimum scores that are listed here. Uh, as far as hours, community service hours, you must have a minimum of 30 approved community service hours. Now, just be aware, students, that the Florida Gold Seal Scholarship, this only covers vocational programs once you go off to your college or university setting or your technical school. Uh, it will only cover that vocational program. The Community Service Policy for Bright Futures. All community service uh, conducted by students must be pre-approved by the high school contact. Mrs. Scriven is the high school contact that approves those proposals. Uh, the first step, a student must complete a community service proposal. Uh, these proposals are located in our guidance lobby. They're also located on the district's website under the community service tab. Once a student completes the proposal and Mrs. Scriven has signed off on the proposal, students are ready to begin their hours. Hours that are conducted that have not been approved cannot be accepted by the high school. So please make certain that you complete your community service proposal uh, as soon as you know that you're ready to do community service hours. Uh, once you begin your hours, you'll, uh, you'll be given a documentation log. Uh, you're responsible for completing that log uh, until you're completely done, and you can submit that form to Mrs. Scriven once you're completely done with your project. Now remember students, community service is not a graduation requirement. This is the community service policy for Bright Futures Scholarship Program. Students, it's going to be very important for you all to be aware of what your GPA is throughout high school. Uh, as you know, the GPA is going to be a major factor when you're looking at college admissions um, later on uh, during your senior year. So there's an excellent tool that the district has uh, offered for our students and parents called Guide Me. You can visit the website, uh, www.guideme.com, uh, and you'll notice that all of these different features are available for you. You can create an academic plan for your four years of high school. Uh, you also have access to your Bright Future status, uh, so you'll know exactly what your Bright Future's GPA is, uh, as well as the amount of community service hours you have in the system. Uh, you can also look for uh, scholarships as well as research colleges within this tool. So it's an excellent tool for all of our students here at Blake High School. Please take a chance to utilize this opportunity, share this with your parents. The login for Guide Me is going to be your EDSB login information. High school is an important time of a student's life. This is the time where you learn about yourself and determine what your future aspirations are. The Florida Choices program is an excellent tool for students to take a career assessment and just simply find out what your interests in life are. And this is also a place where you'll be able to research those particular careers that are, are identified for you. So definitely I would encourage each of you to take the time to assess your interests and determine what career fields are going to be best fit for you later on in life. 
Another great tool for our high school students is the College Board's Big Future program. Big Future is, a t is an online tool that allows students to research colleges, research majors, and also find ways to pay for college through financial aid as well as additional scholarship opportunities. This is a wonderful online tool that allows all of your information to be saved so you can begin the process in the ninth grade and continually grow throughout your high school years. So certainly take advantage of this opportunity. You would simply go to www.bigfuture.org and simply log in and begin. So students, it's time to get moving with your college and career planning. You have all the tools at your fingertips. It's just a matter of getting started. Okay, everybody. So in, and to wrap up everything, hopefully you were listening. And if there's anything that you need, we are all here at Guidance and to help you out.